Hello, um, this is the Vermont Codes update training series. Uh, today we're covering the Commercial Building Energy Standards, also known as CBs, Section uh, C402, which is the Building Envelope section. Um, and also you can get all the content of the code update at this web address um, and it is current as of this recording. A uh, quick overview of some of the folks that were involved in the code update, uh, particularly on the commercial code section. Uh, I am Keith Downs. I work with Navigant Consulting and I was part of the larger team uh, that was associated with this code update. Uh, as you can see, there were many players involved. Okay, so let's get straight to uh, C402, the building envelope section. Um, we'll cover each of these topics in more detail, but these are the major uh, updates happening to the envelope section. Uh, new definitions for the building envelope. Uh, new uh, insulation values, uh, there's a roof assemblies change, um, there are new U-factor tables, fenestration requirements, uh, there's a new alternative to compliance with the above grade portion of the envelope. Uh, the air leakage section has been reorganized. Um, construction doc documents now must include air barrier information. Um, the air leakage compliance via testing uh, has been updated to a more stringent 0 0.30 CFM per square foot. Um, air, barrier, air barrier commissioning has been added um, as, an, as a compliance option. Um, air leakage tests for individual dwelling units has been added. Uh, some more requirements and exceptions for vestibules and some clarification on fuel burning appliances. Okay, so this is actually found in chapter two of the CBs, uh, not in section C402, but here's a, a few definitions that are new uh, with the new text being in red uh, and the, the black text uh, being the original. Um, uh, but wanted to bring it to your attention since these specifically um, are, are, are of concern in the envelope section. Um, so we have introduced the, the notion of a semi-condition space um, as composed to a uh, condition space. And that has been defined based on uh, the amount of energy used to heat or cool it. Um, so, on a condition spaced, um, uh, where it's directly or indirectly heated by a heating system whose output capacity is greater than uh, 14 BTUs uh, uh, per H square foot of floor area, or directly or indirectly cooled by a cooling system whose output is greater than 3.4. If, uh, if either of those two conditions apply, um, then it is a condition space. Um, a semi-condition space uh, uh, would not meet e each, either of those requirements, but does have some amount of minimal heating or cooling. Uh, and if you qualify as a semi-condition space, the Require, the envelope requirements are, uh, are significantly reduced. Um, so uh, semi-condition spaces um, are not going to really apply to, you know, office or, or retail uh, or educational buildings. It's, it, it might apply to a, a warehouse that uh, is not that is kept pretty cold in the winter and fairly warm in the summer uh, might apply to a greenhouse room uh, attached to the front of a building that's not really super well 
super conditioned um, or you know built or maybe manufacturing industrial space uh, that isn't doesn't have a lot doesn't have any air conditioning but does have minimal heating you know the, these uh, will give you options where you don't have to do the full requirements of the condition space also uh, multifamily dwelling um, is much more specific about what exactly qualifies for a multifamily dwelling which becomes important for which part of the envelope you are subject to if you're in a building that's it's not clear if it's multifamily or not um, so going to go through uh, some of the changes that have happened to the envelope um, so uh, this slide here is relating to the roofs these are the R values that are being presented in the code there are accompanying U values that I will not go over here but you can uh, find it in the proposed code language um, so for roofs this is the uh, existing uh, CVs that was put in place in around 2015 um, this gives what the national code model is the 2018 version of IECC that uh, is not uh, part of the CBs but we have always used uh, the IECC to give us uh, the uh, starting point um, for the code that becomes the CBs and, and the majority of the language in our CBs comes directly from ICC, um, but it does have significant amendments. Um, so this is the current code that we are uh, talking about phasing out soon. Um, this is what the national model code suggested for our climate zone. And this is what we are proposing for the 2019 CVs. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, there's now also semi-condition spaces, which I don't have here, uh, but I should point out that that uh, came directly from uh, stakeholder feedback that we got in the early stages of this code update. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, as you can see, the above deck uh, 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 insulation, uh, insulation entirely above deck, has moved up considerably from 30 continuous to an R40 continuous. Um, metal buildings um, uh, now have a two layer before you get to the linear system. So before it's just R25 plus R11 linear. Now it's R25 plus R11 plus an R11 linear. Um, and then attics uh, have not changed. Um, for walls above grade, again, uh, same columns here. Um, you know, maybe I will focus in on the uh, metal frame buildings, um, where before we had R13 plus 7.5 continuous, now we have R13 plus 15 continuous. Or as an alternate, if you do it entirely continuous, it went from an R13 to an R20. Uh, wood framed, uh, we were R13 plus 7.5 continuous, now we're R13 plus 12 continuous. Um, if you're doing it entirely from continuous, it went from an R15 to an R20. And these numbers were all picked in the proposed to all have uh, very close U values when you put it together with the framing. Um, so these are now uh, more in alignment than they used to be in the 2015. Um, for the floors, um, you know, there, there hasn't, you know, for, for joist, framing metal, or wood floors, uh, you know, hasn't really changed. But for slabs, there's been significant change. Um, and before we had this for unheated slabs, R10 for 48 inches. Now we're R10 for the entire slab. Uh, and heated slabs used to be R10 entire. Now they're R20. Um, 
Um, roof assemblies. Um, uh, so we have added uh, some uh, exceptions to the roof assemblies. Um, so, you know, continuously insulated roof assemblies where the R value is at least R12 over the entire roof assembly where the average area weighted R value is equivalent to the R value specified in table C421, um, uh, which was basically the tables I just went over. So it allows you, if you have some areas that are insulated a little heavier than others and others where it has to taper, uh, as long as you get the average equivalent to the table and at no point you're less than R12, you're okay. Uh, a minimum of 60% of the required R value must be maintained in an area where the roof tapers, such as in drains. Uh, mechanical curbs shall be at least R12. And skylight curbs uh, insulated to the level of roofs with insulation entirely above deck or R10, uh, whichever is less. Um, <clears throat> for uh, your reference, um, we have, there, there, in the 2015 CBs, there were a few of these uh, U-factor tables that allow you to, if you, if you, have, if you try to meet the U-value that, that you're looking for, uh, you can go to these tables and say, well, okay, we can um, find the R-value we need that meets the U-value requirement for our framing scenario. Um, the new 2019 uh, CBs has expanded on that. We've provided more tables. We provide the tables that were there in the past, plus we've added to that new tables for attic roofs with, with wood joists, metal framed walls, and wood framed walls. This is just an example of one of the new tables for metal framed walls. Um, and uh, another thing we've done with these tables is We've shaded it to show you what is compliant. So for a metal frame wall, if I back up um, metal framed wall, uh, you know, we're looking for R13 plus R15 continuous. Um, so what you would do is if you had a 16 inch on center uh, to an R15, uh, R13, and you come out to here, with this is the amount of continuous on top of it, you come out with a U value of 0 0.043, uh, which is uh, below the requirement, which is 0 0.044. So you are compliant as long as you are less than the U value. Um, <clears throat> so the shading we've, we've put in here is anything that's shaded white meets uh, the requirements for a condition building Anything in gray uh, meets requirement for a semi-condition building. And if there's a blank in here, that means it does not meet even the semi-condition requirement. So there's a couple blanks in this table. Um, fenestration has been updated. Um, so uh, the, the U factor for uh, fixed fenestration has, is more stringent now from a 0.36 to a 0.29, operable from a 0.43 to 3.7. You can see some of these others have gone down. Skylights have slightly gone down. Um, I haven't listed the solar heat gain coefficients because they have been unchanged uh, from the 2015 CVs. And I should mention, uh, uh, this training, I should have mentioned at the beginning, is really focused just on the changes from 2015 CBs, not focusing in on every section and every requirement if it hasn't changed. This is this training is really meant for someone who is already familiar with the 2015 CBs. Um, and semi-condition spaces are exempt from fenestration requirements entirely. Um, there is a new section to the envelope, a new subsection of the envelope portion uh, of CBs. 
um, that allows greater flexibility. If you do not want to, if you feel you've got a very good shell but it doesn't meet exactly the prescriptive requirements uh, that we've listed in the tables, here is an alternative. Uh, this only applies to the above grade portion of the building. The below grade would still have to meet uh, the requirements in Table 402.1 sub 1 um, uh, and 402.3, which is the fenestration part, uh, which is the, um, I'm sorry, which is the tables I've been going over, and 402.31, which is the fenestration. Um, so in this one, uh, you basically calculate the UA values of everything that's above grade, uh, the fenestration, the above grade walls, the roof, um, the doors, skylights, uh, and you add up uh, your UA values. Um, and then you multiply it uh, uh, in that um, uh, your, your UA is the pro proposed U value of each section times the area of that section. You add all those up uh, and you come up with a UA total. If that UA total divided by the total area above grade is less than 0 0.035, um, then you are compliant, at least with the above grade portion of the building. So this would allow you more flexibility, uh, especially in buildings that uh, don't use a lot of fenestration. It would uh, help out. Uh, now we're moving on to the what I would call the second half of the envelope section, which is, has to do with air leakage. The first part being all insulation, the second part being uh, leakage. Um, I. I We'll say the section has been reorganized uh, in a more logical manner. Um, so uh, instead of uh, having places that are optional versus mandatory kind of sprinkled throughout the air leakage section, now it's organized into what's required and everything that's optional is kind of together in one place. So you must, uh, you must satisfy these five areas, as you always have, the air barriers, dwelling unit, uh, well, actually, the dwelling unit is new. Uh, air intakes has always been there. Loading duct, weather seals, and vestibules have been there. So one new section that you have to comply with. And then um, air barriers is, as before, you had two options. You had an air barrier performance. And then you had a, uh, which is basically bullet door testing. And then you had a, an alternate method. So uh, the way it works now is to pass air barriers, which is 402.4.1. You have to comply with 402.1.1, which is blower door testing, or you have to comply with 402.1.2 through 402.1.8. So it would be all of these other sections. So you have an option of either air barrier or all these other sections. I should mention that regardless of what option you pick, um, you will be required to do a blower door test on all buildings. Um, and that's the same for residential as well. Residential and commercial, every building now needs to be blower door tested. Um, as part of that, the construction document shall contain a diagram showing the building's pressure boundary uh, basically the, the, the air barrier layer uh, in plan in sections and a calculation of the pressure boundary to be considered in the test. So essentially what you have to do here is provide the square feet of the air barrier uh, that the blower door test would be uh, testing against. Uh, much easier for the architect and uh, general contractor to have an up-to-date drawing that, that gives the area of the air barrier than to ask a uh, lower door technician to field measure. Uh, we feel it'll be more accurate if that is done right in the construction drawings. 
Okay, so for, for air leakage, I said you had two options. One option is to blow a door test. Um, so here is the revised wording of blower door test. Um, it, you used to be able to do it to 0 0.5 CFM per square foot. It's now 0.3 CFM per square foot. Um, however, it used to be the area used to exclude the slab and below grade walls. Now we are doing a six-sided surface area which will make the test go easier because your denominator in that CFM per square foot is now larger, uh, which allows your, your leakage to be a little larger. However, uh, in 2015 CBs, it used to be at, at negative 50 pascals of pressure. Uh, we're now requiring uh, negative 75 pascals of pressure, uh, which will make the test uh, more stringent. So at the higher pressure, it's going to make it more difficult. Having a larger surface area will make it a little easier. Uh, whether overall it's going to be easier or harder for your building is going to depend on the geometry of your building. Um, so, as I said, you now have to hit 0.3 CFM per square foot. And if you do your blower door test and you get 0.30 or 0.28, you pass and you now have met the air leakage requirement. Um, however, uh, if you do fail your 0.3 CFM per square foot, uh, all is not lost. There is a new exception to this where um, if, if you're uh, somewhere between 0.3 and 0.4 CFM per square foot, so if you at least hit 0.4, if you do a diagnostic evaluation with a smoke tracer or infrared imaging uh, while the building's pressurized, leaks are noted and sealed, and you take so you actually take corrective action to uh, to patch up all these areas, you will still comply. Um, so it gives you if if you were counting on this and you fail by a little bit, this gives you a little cushion. If you don't want to try to meet the 0.3 CFM per square foot uh, and you want to go down a different path, um, you have to hit all of these sections over here, continuous air barrier commissioning, uh, through all these sections through recess lighting. And all these sections uh, were here before in the 2015 CBs. Um, with the exception of uh, the air barrier commissioning. So we're going over that in this training in some detail. I won't go over these other sections since they are uh, the same as it was in the last one. So uh, on top of what you used to do, you now have to add in commissioning um, with a registered design professional. It shall provide evidence of commissioning of the continuous air barrier um, and a commissioning report shall be delivered to the owner and shall include the inspection checklist which we'll go over shortly and reports from field inspections during construction showing compliance with air barrier requirements uh, you know basically compliance with all the other sections that you always had to had to uh, comply with the commissioning checklist, it's a couple a couple slides long because uh, there's a lot of details in here. Um, I'm not going to go through all these sections. Uh, if you're playing this recording, you might want to pause and read at your own speed all the various requirements. Um, but as you can see, it's a, a fairly long list. Um, in there as well. Um, so you have to do site field fenestration has certain requirements, exterior doors have certain requirements. Um, one thing you should note in here though is that a blower door test does have to be performed and the results have to be presented to the building owner. Uh, now there's no number you have to meet as long as you did your commissioning 
but you still have to report the, the number, which is why I, I said that all buildings are going to have to have a blower door test. Just some are going to require to hit a certain number, and some will not if they went through commissioning and all the other uh, requirements that have always been there. Uh, regardless of what you do to test your exterior uh, air barrier, um, there is now also a requirement uh, when you have dwelling units. Uh, so basically, if you're in a multifamily, or a dormitory or something like that, uh, you have to blow a door test a sample uh, of the buildings, uh, and they have to meet a 0.35 CFM per square foot at 75 Pascals, uh, six-sided surface area. Uh, the intent is that the contractor will not know which ones are going to be selected for testing. It would be randomly tested. Uh, you have to include at least 10% of the dwelling units in each building. You have to include at least one corner unit and approximately equal number of units on each floor, at least one unit of each floor level. Vestibules, uh, there are a few new requirements beyond what was in the 2015 CVs and a few new exemptions. Uh, on the requirements end, interior and exterior doors have to be at least seven feet apart. Um, uh, the exterior envelope of conditioned vestibules shall comply with the requirements of a conditioned space. Um, uh, if, if, uh, if, the, if the vestibule is unconditioned, then either the interior or exterior envelope of the unconditioned vestibule show requirement shall comply with the requirements of a conditioned space. So if you if you meet the requirements of a conditioned space on the exterior, you are fine either way. If you don't condition your vestibule, you could not uh, have good R values on on the outside of the vestibule, but uh, but then you would have to have good R values on the inside. Um, and then there are some new exemptions here uh, for doors used to, you know, basically garage doors that for vehicular move, movement or material handling, um, you know, has an exception. Elevator doors and parking garages provide the elevators having a closed lobby at each level of the garage. And doors opening directly from a semi condition space are uh, exemptions. Uh, and this is not really a change. Um, the fuel burning appliances, uh, you can read the language in the 2015 CVs here versus what the 2019 is. Uh, essentially, it's saying the same thing. It's just uh, reorganized to uh, provide a little more clarity. Uh, and basically, you've got to comply with one of the two things here, um, which is the room or space contained appliance shall be outside the envelope, or if it's on the inside, the envelope has to be isolated from conditioned spaces. Um, and then it has to comply with certain things that are unchanged from 2015 CVs. Uh, that is, in a nutshell, section C402. However, I do, before you go, I do want to briefly talk about section C406, which is the additional efficiency package options as some of this applies to the envelope of the building. Um, and this will be a new note you will see at the beginning of the envelope section. Um, and, and the 2015 CVs had this C406 additional efficiency package options in there, but um, we've added a message to draw your attention to it for those people that really just look at Section C402 for the envelope requirements. So in, in addition to the requirements of 402, uh, envelope enhan enhancements may be needed to meet the requirements of 406 additional efficiency package options. So 406 um, 
essentially uh, gives the uh, design team and, and contractors um, options on how to comply with code. So uh, four six is additional things you have to do. They could be envelope related. They could be uh, HVAC related. They could be uh, electrically related. Could be other things. But you do have to come up uh, and select a strategy of how you're going to meet a certain amount of points. Um, and if the strategy is to include the points that's available through envelope en enhancements, uh, then you need to be aware of that when you're designing your envelope. Um, so as I said, uh, you must achieve six points. You have, you can make six points by doing combinations of all of these options. Um, you will notice most of these are not envelope related. However, two of them are, and I will go over the envelope related ones in more detail. Um, this is the point system that's available. Uh, so if you're in a group R1, uh, which is basically hotels, motels, group R2, which is mostly multifamily, B for businesses like office buildings, E for education like K through 12, M for mercantile, like retail buildings, and all other groups fall on this last column. If you were to choose like the enhanced envelope if you were in an R1 building you would get three of the uh, what was it, six points that you need uh, right there and then you could get three from somewhere else in this column or if you were in R2 you could get four of the points here and you only need two more from some other section so that's how that works um, this is just the definition of those building classes that I briefly went over. Uh, you may want to pause the presentation and read this. Um, so one of the options, as I said, was enhanced envelope performance. Uh, it's a new option to the 2019 CVs that was not, it was not an option provided in the 2015 CVs. Um, and basically the UA of the building thermal envelope as designed shall be not less than 15% below the total UA of the building thermal envelope for a building of identical finger configuration fenestration area in accordance with section 402.13. So you take the amount, the percent of the wall that is, that is windows, you keep it the same, you keep the configuration the same, same number of stories, same surface areas calculate what the prescriptive requirements would require for your building of that configuration and fenestration area. And then um, if you reduce that UA um, by 15% or 85% of that, uh, and you meet that, that lower threshold, you, are, you qualify for the extra points that are given in this table. So basically, you have to lower the UA by 15%. The other option uh, that your design team may choose to go after uh, outside of, of, of against uh, envelope is reduced air infiltration. Um, so um, basically, on that one, uh, instead of a 0.3 CFM per square foot, if you get down to 0.25 CFM per square foot, uh, everything else being the same, uh, you would require for the extra points um, uh, and go back to our table and just take the R1 example. Uh, for enhanced envelope, you would get three points. For air infiltration, you would also get three. But on R2, you would get four and five, respectively. Um, and that is uh, brings us to the end of this envelope training. Um, again, my name's Keith Downs. Uh, I was part of the, the uh, code update team. Uh, I work for a company called Navigant. Uh, it, materials are posted 
at this website, the same website we had at the beginning. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, you can send to the Public Service Department at this email address. Um, uh, logistical questions, um, you know, could also go to Energy Futures Group uh, at this email address or that phone number. Okay, thank you very much for attending the training and uh, 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 I will uh, talk to you later. Bye-bye.